Y254 Imagine Indeed, welcome to I254 Business News this 15th day of October 2019. My name is Mira Masava and today we are discussing the current wage bill. And to help me discuss that is Andrew Shonko. I got your name right? Yes. Karibu Tena. I, I know you love this place and you love coming to I254. Yeah, true. This, this is like home to you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for making time, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I know where people share your pesa. <laughs> the state of the nation, you know, <laughs> we borrow money here and there, and this debt, I'm telling you, is now skyrocketing or it's suffocating the nation of the economy, according to that is according to some member of parliaments or some politi politician or political leader who are saying that the debt is now suffocating the country. What do you think? It's really suffocating the country. I think to, to the truth of the matter, that is true. Mm -hmm. But uh, even before we continue, first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me again today. Caribou. And also want to congratulate uh, Kipchoge. <laughs> you know, we had a very <laughs> good <laughs> over the Three weekend. Days ago. <laughs> yeah, but, but actually he mm. showed uh, us as an individual and also as a nation that actually there is nothing that that is uh, limited. So we can, can we borrow that <laughs> statement to borrowing money? <laughs> yes. We cannot uh, limit ourselves when it comes to repaying the loans. Yeah, yeah, you know? yes, yes, we cannot. But actually, mm. uh, the question that you've actually asked mm. as a nation and as individual, there are people who are actually saying that we are over borrowing. If you look uh, in terms of uh, debt ratio and also in terms of uh, the GDP that we have, because currently we are at the G our GDP is actually at eight, uh, eight uh, point. Mm -hmm. 0.5 trillion mm -hmm. and uh, actually if you do a comparative analysis of uh, of uh, between 2013 and right now uh, because between uh, 2013 you are actually at 1.9 mm -hmm. right now we we are actually doing a debt of 5.9 9 trillion mm, that's close which to is, 6 trillion yeah which is mm. actually an increase of uh, almost <coughs> excuse mm. more than 300 percent mm. when it comes to, to the uh, in terms of borrowing and uh, just the other day the cs uh, actually said that they are actually going to increase the debt ceiling to 9 trillion mm. when it comes to, 20, uh, to 2024 mm. which will actually be around if you compare uh, in a span of 10 uh, 10 years we'll actually be saying we have increased our borrowing to 475 percent we never reached that point which will, uh, <laughs> which, which will actually be mm. so high mm. but then again we need to ask ourselves as a as a nation are we uh, our debt sustainability how well Mm. Can we be able to be uh, to pay that debt that we have? Mm. Can we be able to continue actually uh, in the future be able to pay that uh, that loan mm. and actually be able be credit credit worthiness? Because uh, even as an individual, as you continue borrowing, mm. uh, you are, you are told like your credit worthiness is either going up depending <laughs> on how you are paying okay. or is actually going, going down. down. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm. So I want to ask our viewers this evening: What do you think is the depths of forgetting our economy? Is it going up or is is it going down or what do you think? Send us your feedback on our social media platform. That is Y254 channel. That is across all social media platform. The hashtag to use is Y254 updates. Or you can tweet me directly at Miriam underscore Masava. You haven't told us your handle? Um, Shonko Andrew. Shonko Andrew. Yes, that on is Twitter. Twitter. Yes, on yes. Twitter. Send in your feedback. I will be sampling some of those. Uh, as the show continues. But let me start by saying that finance ministers across the Commonwealth countries uh, will be converging uh, at Washington, D.C., that is this Thursday, to discuss matters debt and how they can curb or the measures they can take to handle the debt crisis in both countries, in the, that is Commonwealth countries. You know, our public debt standard right now stands at 60%, 60% of the country's GDP. And earlier, uh, the government set a debt ceiling of about 60 percent of the GDP but right now it's a 60 percent okay now the government con is considering setting a public debt ceiling or uh, based on the amount and not a percentage to the GDP as a, as as it is currently the case so uh, that is acting CS who came up with this solution do you think it will work 
or this is just a way <laughs> of people, <laughs> the government is just borrowing more money and more money. I think uh, it may work mm. uh, because, uh, like he's saying, he's not going to put the debt ceiling uh, to GDP versus uh, debt, debt ratio that is 60% right now. And they are looking into putting it ceiling in terms of uh, cash that is 9 trillion mm -hmm. by 2024. But if you look at uh, our uh, fees, we I think we, what I can say that we, we've become what uh, economists will say fiscal indiscipline. <laughs> because if you, if you look the rate at which we are actually borrowing, mm. from the look of things, we might not even get to 2024 when it comes to borrowing the 9 trillion. We might actually reach there earlier than, the, mm. uh, earlier than that. But mm. the question is, we are setting it there. Are there policies that are actually being put in place to see and make sure that uh, we will not actually surpass that? Because it's just a set, like uh, uh, what you can do as an individual, uh, you mm -hmm. can say like, I'll not borrow more than 5,000. <laughs> But if you are not disciplined and mm -hmm. say, like, actually, when I get to borrow 5,000, I will not surpass that. Because the ex expenditures are there in terms of recurrent expenditure and so on, in terms of the project that the government is actually involving itself into. So when the, uh, the project are set and they are, uh, they are stalled, they, they need to borrow more money to continue to continue with the project. So actually, they need to come up with policies that will actually be put in place to ensure that mm -hmm. when we get to $9 trillion, we are not going to, to go beyond that. Yes. And he also added that uh, that uh, the CS, that is for acting CS of national treasuries, he added that, uh, again, that borrowing should not be, be based on ability to service, but also quantify figure for increased transparency and accountability on how the monies, monies borrowed are spent. Now, my question is, is the money sp uh, borrowed used properly or is it just being used in a potelea for corruption? I think I think That's you've mentioned difference. something very important mm. uh, that I say that it has been in the ears of Kenyans for long. Mm -hmm. Accountability, which uh, I can say is actually good on paper, but in terms of action, we are not accountable on what we are doing. Look yes. at uh, some of the projects that uh, we are, uh, the uh, the government is being involved into. Are they being appraised in the right mm -hmm. way? So you'll actually find, uh, let's say, for example, they want uh, maybe to to do a project like uh, maybe Galana Kulalu or maybe uh, do a dam like mm. we, we, we saw the other day. In terms of appraisal, you will find like uh, a, a dam that was actually supposed to cost a nation like let's say 20 billion, is actually costing a nation almost double to that. And that money is actually going to people's pocket. Mm. So in terms of account accountability that mm. the CS is saying, I really, really think that uh, Kenya as a nation has, what I, I will say, a value and a system problem. Systems are not uh, are not right. People are, be, uh, are being uh, taken to court uh, in terms of being not being accountable, but only stories. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <coughs> in matters of repaying this debt, uh, there's something the president told us about. <laughs> Let us take a look. We'll be back with, after that. The issue of debt is not about incurring debt. It's about how you use that debt. Okay. For those kind of reasons, I will. Okay, okay. Me, my question, my question this night. No, the, the interest is growing. We are continuing to borrow. Every three months, we'll hear the government uh, borrow this million, yeah, yeah, this yeah. million. This and the interest. Billion by the billions. Yeah, yeah. In bi okay. You see, it's even in billions. And the amount is increasing. Uh, the interest is increasing day and night. So we, it's like we end up borrowing to repay this, the interest, not even to repay the loan, to pay the interest. I think the issue mm. actually started uh, way back in uh, September in 2014 uh, when uh, Kenya wa was moved from, um, um, uh, from a low uh, income earner to a middle income earner whereby uh, those uh, countries and uh, syndicate loans that has been borrowed, mm. we have a euro bond and uh, if you look at the loans, uh, the syndicate loan and the euro bonds that we are actually taking, mm. they are actually in terms of interest, in terms of repaying, they actually, their interest are actually very, 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 very high. And uh, you you will find maybe the loan that we have uh, Kenya as a nation has taken, they are they have actually been able to only pay the interest in all the time that is uh, that uh, they have been trying to fuel the loan. So for me, actually, I think we also need to involve the public when it comes to debt mm. because you cannot take a loan as an individual, but when it comes to paying, 
it's it's not an individual thing it's actually affecting each and every person in the public sector and so on we actually need to to, mm. to know what has been uh, put there we actually need to involve the public in when it comes to the matter of uh, taking loans not only involve them when it comes to the matter of paying the loan but you know the president from that clip the president says that the, the loans <laughs> <laughs> You're already laughing. Uh, he, he, we keep on borrowing us for developments. Are we seeing the developments apart from this SGR and the good roads? I think I, th I really don't think we are. We can actually be able to quantify mm. the loans that we have actually been able to take to take as a country in terms of the project that we are saying. How many projects have uh, that have actually been reported that they have failed in terms? If if you compare them with the project that actually have been able to succeed, and even those that have succeeded, mm. can they actually be able to say like we 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 took a loan, let's say for example of six hundred and eighty billion, and we're able to in, uh, to invest it into this project? How long will the project itself be able? to pay back the loan that uh, it has actually been able to take. It, we are also uh, engaging in so many projects mm. that actually are just being launched. Then four years down the line, you will go to the project and only find two or three stones for the foundation that the are actually country. being set. <laughs> and money was actually dispatched. The treasury actually dispatched the money mm. for doing it. Mm. Contracts are, are being cancelled. Mm. And, and uh, there are commitment fees that, the fees that had already been paid. Mm. So that money actually goes to waste without even being able to quantify the project that uh, uh, the loans were taken for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the treasury was, was trying to come up with considered uh, some options just to try to stabilize the country's debt position as in by collecting that third of the revenue collected by KRA goes to repay the loan <laughs> instead of using that amount yeah. to develop the nation. I think I think that is another challenge mm. that uh, that you are facing when it comes to tax na uh, to tax net mm. that actually KRA is trying to widen and be able to collect tax as much as they can so that they can be able to, uh, to repay back the loan that mm. we are having. Uh, even what uh, we've actually mentioned in terms of a third of our revenue in terms of paying the the, the mm. which which actually if you compare many nations, I don't think there are many nations which are actually doing that, but it's actually made, made us to reach that far. And actually one of the challenges that we're having, mm -hmm. we are being reactive instead of being proactive. Because these things happen, the expert will actually, who will advise and say actually the loans that we have taken, we will be able to pay them, let's say for example in two or three years, but depending on our income, we cannot actually be able to fuel them on the on the time on the time frame that we have been uh, we have been able to put to put in uh, in in place. So that's why you're finding like we cannot collect all the revenue that is actually supposed to go back to the common man who was actually be who actually fueled mm -hmm. that money and gave mm -hmm. out that money, but they're not getting them in return. So I think they need to come up with other measures. Mm -hmm. of which they really need to rethink about the measure that will come up with so that they can be able to uh, to pay those mm -hmm. loans not only from the money that uh, they'll, be t they'll be taking from the uh, revenue. But my thinking is if we put that money properly, if we use the money we borrowed properly to the right developments will be very far. Even repaying this loan will not be as difficult as it is right now. It will be not be skyrocketing after three months because from now, the next three months, I'm imagining will be at 6.3. Yeah. The next three months, 6.6. Yes. And, and mm. if you look right now, we're only depending on agriculture. Mm. Agriculture, I think it is one of the sector that is actually carrying uh, the, the back of this country. Mm. But uh, if you look at some of the policies, uh, some of the measures that have been put, look at uh, people who are actually uh, doing tea. Look at uh, the project like, for example, Galana Kulal, which mm. was actually supposed to produce a lot of maize, uh, be exported and actually be able to repay back the money that was taken to mm. undertake that project. Look at even the big four agenda that actually the government is looking into so much. Will it actually be able to come to a reality one day? We are almo almost approaching Vision uh, 2030, which is something actually people are, have, uh, have even forgotten when it comes to, uh, to Vision 2030. We actually have four very good agendas that has been put in place, but if, if you look at the measures that is, has been put in, in place so that this big four agenda can be achieved, I actually cannot comfortably say mm -hmm. that we'll be able to achieve them when it comes 
uh, to the end of the day. Mm. Mm. Even even uh, the government released a report uh, of the second quarter of the country that the GDP of the country is really growing at a very slow rate. Well, guys, if you're, if you're watching us right now, what is GDP? GDP is just the monetary value of all finished goods and services made in a country during a specific period. This period can be three quarterly or yearly or annually. Okay, according to the report is that communication was the highest when it comes in terms of growth uh, because our GDP right now stands at 5.6 compared to even last year during the same period. So communication... <coughs> Communication stands at 11.6%, grew at, that is 11.6%. Accommodation and food services grew at 10.6%. Construction grew at 7.2%. Financial and insurance grew at 2.1%, while construction at 1.8%. Agriculture, the backbone of this country, is even nowhere to be seen. I don't know, it's because of the weather. What could be the factors contributing to this growth? I think we are, we are uh, because agriculture is actually our cash cow, mm. and we are milking the cash cow so much. Mm -hmm. And when you milk the cash cow so much, that means at the end of the day, it might actually be, uh, it might actually not survive. Mm. Because look at our economy right now. The economy is down. The rate of unemployment is actually increasing day in day out. Businesses are closing down, and you've been able. You, you, are, you are able to see uh, some few days ago. Most of people are being retrenched. They're mm -hmm. being told there are, there are no job. That means the the business environment is not actually so good. And that environment, which is not so good, is the environment which you are expecting mm -hmm. to collect revenue from, so that you can use a third of that revenue to be able to pay the loans that are coming. Mm -hmm. So I think the business environment, when it's so when it's good, when uh, when a good number of people are employed, they'll mm -hmm. actually be able to pay the tax. Mm -hmm. That tax can actually be uh, be able to be used to develop other projects. Mm -hmm. That project will be self-reliable. Uh, and when those projects are self-reliable, they actually be able to uh, get uh, get more revenues from it. And it will be able to fill the, the, these loans. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think we need to move from individualistic that we have as, as a nation. Mm -hmm. Because when, uh, let's say, for example, money is given to a, to a certain project, you'll find like most of that money, actually more than half of that money, can cannot be accounted for. Mm. Look at some of the reports that Auditor General has been giving day in, day out. You'll be able to see like the money that was uh, that was given to a, a certain project. It's mm. not accounted for at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And that money was actually borrowed. From, it's not like it was it was a profit that was reinvested into that project. It was borrowed. Mm. So it, if it, you cannot account for such money, that means we are in for a big mess. And mm. uh, I don't think the ship... We are actually in a situation whereby yeah. we are asking ourselves not if the ship will sink, <laughs> it's when the ship will sink. When the ship will sink, we'll <laughs> come back on that point. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back after this. Don't go anywhere. Why two five four? Imagine. Yes, welcome back. This is Y254 Business News. My name is Miriam Sava, and today we are discussing matters debt, the country's debt right now, which stands at 5.99. If you round it off, it's like 6 trillion. <laughs> well, some quarters are saying that this debt is actually suffocating the, the nation's economy. And you know, the Treasury is, is trying to come up with some measures just to curb this and put in place and actually try and repay this without suffocating the nation. And you know th that finance ministers across the Commonwealth countries are right now in, uh, they will be converging, that is on Thursday. They're not there yet. They'll be there on Thursday to discuss matter debt in, in their various countries. And I'm wondering, will this come up with, will this meeting bring up a solution or is it just one of those, one of those meetings? I think we've had this debate 
quite for long. Mm. And we actually need to, f move, to move from numbers and actually be able to come to the reality of things. Mm. If you come to the economy itself, it will actually tell you what the realities are. I think we are very good in policy making, so good in boardroom meetings. We come up with policies, but at the end of the day, are those policies actually be, be uh, will those policies actually be implemented? If you go to these offices, I'm telling you the truth. Mm. Policies are there, and they are actually uh, in shelves. But are they actually being uh, uh, action? Are they actually being uh, being made to materialize at the at the end of the day? Because you cannot tell me there is no policy that will uh, actually uh, looking into the matters of accountability. Mm. It is there when you come up with a project. At the end of the day. As a project manager and as a person who is in charge of that project, you should actually be able to bring uh, to bring to the table that this is what we took this money for and this is what we've been able to achieve. So I think that is one of the biggest challenges that we are having. Personally, I don't, I really don't think we'll, uh, something will materialize because th <laughs> we've seen this quite mm. quite often. Yes, it's yet to be confirmed if the acting CS of National Treasury will be attending this meeting. Well, we'll know that by tomorrow and I'm, I'm wondering can the leadership shape the economy of this country the direction of this country i think they can they have everything they need mm -hmm. at their court because they are in charge of making policies they're in charge of setting the ceiling that, that we are saying about concerning the debt ceiling mm -hmm. they're in charge of making sure that uh, those those policies that has been set are for are being followed to the latter mm -hmm. and they have all the powers that they need to make sure that everything that has been put put in place all the agencies that are there are followed i think we're very good in coming up with commissions <laughs> a lot of commissions when it comes give, to them. Give, uh, former attorney general was, give, uh, was saying these commissions, they, we are so good at forming these commissions. These commissions is actually what is suffocating the economy. The, yeah? the commissions mm. want the commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, they want the commission them, themselves. Mm. But at the end of the day, are they actually being able to bring something? Uh, uh, is there anything mm. that is coming uh, out as, as a fruit? So for me, I think leadership will shape up mm. the, the the economy of, of any nation but they actually need to put in a lot of a lot of measures mm. that and a lot of policies need actually to be put in place and be followed to the latter as i said earlier we become so reactive like just something happened oh yeah this happened we need to be proactive we be able to oversee like uh, next year what are we projecting our economy mm -hmm. to be how the growth of our economy how, how are we projecting it we j don't just need to borrow as a nation without doing a project uh, a projection and be able to see we we'll, yes we'll get this, this money will it be of benefit to us as an economy and so on Yes, and let me jump to something else. Considering we are, we are borrowing money to pay the interest, it's like a spiral like this. Eh? So my question is, who will repay this loan? And how long <laughs> will it take? Considering we, every three months we are borrowing money and it's going up and it's going up. So who will repay this loan? Which government? This is the current one or the coming one? <laughs> I think it's something that we need to accept the reality that actually this will have to be inherited for a, for a very, very long time. It's not actually the next government and even the, because, the, because we are borrowing for recurrent expenditure. If, if you've reached a situation whereby the, you're borrowing for recurrent mm -hmm. expenditure, that means you are in for a very tough fight when it comes to the matter of running the affairs of, of, of the nation. So I think I don't know who will pay it. But as I said earlier, we need actually to wake up very, very fast from the, from, uh, I don't know if it's the sleep that we've been having. <laughs> we actually need to wake up very, mm. very fast mm. and be able to know who will actually repay, the, re, repay this loan. Mm. Those who will repay this loan are losing job day in, day out. Those who will, pay the, will uh, repay this loan are actually having a very bad day in their business. Their businesses are not, are not uh, making it each and every day. So mm. we actually need to be able to provide a very, uh, very good conducive environment mm. so that our businesses can be able to thrive, mm. uh, invest 
investors can be able to come to uh, the to, to our nation and invest and be able to increase our revenue in terms of collection and so on. You cannot tax someone who is actually doesn't have an income mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So provide avenues for people to be able to get uh, re, uh, resources and so on. So wh when you come to, uh, when you go to widen your tax net, you can actually be able to get people who will actually pay that tax. Yes, you've mentioned some solution on how to, to curb these debts. Now, I as we finalize, can you give us more solutions <laughs> as we end the discussion? I think uh, one of the things that we uh, that need to be sorted uh, out very fast is the issue of unemployment. Mm -hmm. With the unemployment rates are actually incre increasing day in day out. Mm. Because we have seen banks merging industry for being closed down, closing yeah. shops, and that is unemployment. Yes, unemployment is increasing day in day out, mm. and the people who are actually uh, supposed to give these revenues have no jobs. Where will they get the money to give out revenues? We also need to put a lot of emphasis when it comes to the matter of manufacturing. We cannot be importing everything. We actually need to come up with something that we can actually be able to sell. And then from, sell, from selling, we can actually be able to, uh, to, to raise uh, revenue. Because you've seen other countries in Africa, they are doing, they're actually doing so well because they are following uh, their policies and the measures that they have put uh, in place uh, so well. We also need to balance things like uh, uh, in the public sector because we'll be able to find like a, lo a lot of resources and a lot of uh, money uh, that uh, we are getting as a nation is actually being used mm -hmm. to... Uh, for the for recurrent expenditure so public sector actually needs to come up with a way in which they'll actually be able to reduce their their spendings and and so on increase domestic production in terms of agriculture and so and that, that will actually see our country grow the economy and at the end of the day mm. maden zitapungua <laughs> zitapungua indeed your final comments i, th I think my final comment and how can people reach you as well uh let me first give my final my, my mm. final comment. Mm. I think my final comment what what I, uh, I will say we cannot say like uh, we are doing so well uh, so so well mm. or so badly. Mm. Uh, we still have hopes as individuals because what can you do as an individual to be able uh, to be able to reduce debt yourself as a, as an individual what uh, as an individual can you do to be able to uh, to increase your income and so on and also the part of the government it needs actually to play their role uh, come up with policies and be able to follow those policies that they, are, they have uh, they uh, have come up with yes uh, for my for how you can reach me you yeah. can actually follow me on Twitter mm -hmm. at Shonko Andrew yes we can and you're also doing an amazing thing yes I'm Asoliango. yes I'm please mention that yeah I'm doing uh, I'm doing an uh, a project mm -hmm. that is called Hasoliango mm -hmm. and what we're doing at Hasoliango we are actually looking into empowering the youths mm -hmm. with uh, business skills be able to organize trainings and a workshop and we are working on a proposal, a very good proposal. I hope mm. they will be able to buy it mm. and be able to see how they can actually support our uh, th that initiative mm. so that we can be able to help this use. Most of them, you actually, when people lose job, mm. Almost like eighty percent of people who lose job are actually youth. So how can you help these youths who youths who are actually losing jobs, getting in, into crime, drugs, and so on? So that is what uh, essentially we are doing. Okay, thank you so much, yeah. Andrew, for making time. Thank you too. Please return to discuss matters business. Thank you. <laughs> yes, so the four things I've gathered from Andrew: good leadership, proper investment, job creation, and increased domestic production and that marks the discussion here on Y254. Thank you so much for staying with us and making time to be with us here. My name is Miriam Masava. But first let me thank each and every person who made this production a success, the directors, the camera ladies and everyone else involved. Well, that's all we had for you. Good night. <laughs> Good night and God bless you. See you next Tuesday, same time, same place. The buzz is up next.